This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best way to make an amazing website. Hey guys, it's Max. Right here, I have the 24-inch M1 iMac, and today we're gonna compare it to the best-rated 24-inch Windows all-in-one. And we're not only gonna compare things such as the features, the design, the performance, we're also gonna talk about the displays, the speakers, the webcams, and some other surprising differences, and see how well does Windows compete against the iMac. Now, before I get into the exterior differences, I have to talk about prices. The M1 iMac start at $1,300. This one right here is a more expensive model. And when we get into performance, I will actually talk about both the performance for the base model and the higher end one. Whereas this HP right here, it actually launched at $1,300, but you can get it at a discount right now, depending on where you're buying it. Now at Best Buy, it is rated 4.9 stars. It is a 2021 model that people are absolutely loving. Now, as far as the included keyboard and mice. With the iMac, you get Apple's Magic Keyboard. It is a shorter version. Ours does have Touch ID, which you can add on for, I believe it's $50 extra for the base model. That is very convenient to log in. As far as quality, this thing is excellent. The battery life is really good. And the mouse, we have Apple's Magic Mouse. A lot of people don't like the ergonomics. I do like how it feels. I like the touch surface for scrolling. This is about $150 worth of extras based on Apple's prices. Now on the HP, we do have wireless accessories, which is great. Some of them actually include wired, even at these price points. And the keyboard, although it's mostly plastic and the keys feel plasticky, you have a full size one and the keys actually feel quite good. I probably wouldn't even swap it. I would just continue using it. But the mouse on the other hand, this thing is pure junk, super cheap. When you're clicking it, it feels awful. The scroll wheel doesn't feel good. This is something that I would have to toss and get something better. As far as the computers themselves, we have some differences and some similarities. Now I know a lot of people complained about the chin on the new IMAX, but look at that. We also have a big fat chin that didn't have to be there because this thing's actually a lot thicker than this iMac, but it's just the look that they're going for, the iconic iMac chin. Now this thing actually weighs about 16, 17 pounds. It is dramatically heavier than I think the 9.8 pounds on the iMac, but it's made using a lot more plastic. The outer shell's plastic. We have cloth here, plastic underneath. The base is plastic as well. So it's interesting how much heavier it is. But one really cool thing, because this is plastic instead of all aluminum and glass for the iMac, they actually included a wireless charger. So as soon as you set your phone down like this, bam, it wirelessly charges, and that is super cool. Now our iMac has a webcam right where you typically would expect it, whereas the HP actually has one that pops up, and that's cool because you can get privacy, you can manually close it, but it is an extra step. And this machine does actually have Windows Hello, so you can automatically, based on your face, log you in. But then if it is closed, you actually have to open it up before it logs you in. So it kind of kills that time saving unless you keep it open all the time. Now I'm gonna compare the quality of the webcams as well as the speakers and displays soon, but let's go ahead and spin these guys to the backs and I'll show you guys our other differences. Now the first thing that's interesting is how much taller the iMac is, although it has a smaller chin, and it has the same exact display. I know I complain that it's too low to the table, where this one on the HP is actually even lower. Neither of them can actually be lifted up. You just have tilt right here. So both of them do have tilting built in. Our iMac has four USB type C ports, two of which are Thunderbolt, and that is for the higher end model. If you get the base one, you only get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which can be expanded, but that is still a major pain if you're gonna use this computer with different peripherals. Whereas our HP has a ton of ports. We not only have standard USB uh, ports, we also have one USB type C. We also have two HDMIs. One is an output to an external display. Another one is an actual input. So because it's an all in one and a monitor, if you want to hook up your PlayStation, you want to hook up another computer to it, you have the capability, which you don't with the Mac. We also have an SD card slot and we have Ethernet built in, which is not built into the base model of the iMac. The higher end does have a power adapter uh, where you can have Ethernet. And then not only do we have those ports, we also have a port on the side here here for another USB, which is awesome. And as far as thickness, well, we have a massive difference. The iMac is insanely thin, whereas the HP, not that it's super thick, but when you compare it, you know, as far as thickness and weight, there is a pretty massive difference. 
Uh, I think that overall, thickness doesn't really matter that much, but what does matter is the overall design. And even though the HP doesn't look bad, technically looks pretty good for Windows All-in-One, the iMac definitely wins. We have all glass here with aluminum. We have the different color options. We have the color matching accessories. So as far as how premium and how good it looks in your house, I definitely think the iMac takes the win. Now it's a shame that the HP doesn't have Thunderbolt. I really don't know why. Because of that, when you're transferring a 16 gig file, it'll take roughly 50 to 55 seconds instead of just eight seconds with the Mac if you have a fast SSD. But of course the Mac doesn't have an, even an SD card reader, which is kind of ridiculous how little ports it has. And next, I'm really curious about the speaker quality. Apple showed off their crazy speaker design here. They said it's the best quality in any Mac, but the HP has this huge chin right here that is all set up for speakers. So before we go ahead and compare them side to side, let me give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. If you've been looking to make a website, Squarespace is seriously the best way to go. You can make a great looking website like we did with literally no web making experience. It doesn't matter if you want a portfolio, a blog, e-commerce, or anything else, you just choose from one of the great templates and customized blocks of text and images. It's incredibly simple, it's affordable, and ours have been running flawlessly for years now, bringing in tons of traffic thanks to its built-in SEO tools. Start your free two-week trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash maxtech or by using the custom link down below. And when you're ready to launch, you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now let's go ahead and compare the speakers. HP is proud. They even have the B&O logo right here with the little tag on the side. Let's see if it can compete. <laughs> And there you go, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Personally, I was blown away by how loud this speaker system gets. It literally is much, much louder, almost twice as loud it seems. And at even 60%, it's as loud as the iMac is maxed out. Now, as far as full blast, the quality does go down, the bass goes down, uh, but it is loud. But when you drop it down to that 60 or 70%, uh, then the bass is actually even a little bit better than the iMac. The only thing it really lacks is vocals, but overall I would have to say, if I can get this sound in an iMac, as long as I don't have to have this huge array of speakers, I absolutely would. Now Apple did a good job with how thin this is and all the channels that they made inside, but still I wish the bass was better and I wish it got louder. And now let's go ahead and compare the webcams, the new M1 iMacs, have a 1080p webcam with great new processing, but surprisingly, the HP actually has a webcam that is 1440p quality, along with two microphones on the front as well that are facing you. So let's go ahead and see which one looks better and which one sounds better. This is the microphone and webcam quality with the HP 24 inch all in one using their 1440p webcam and the dual front facing microphones, along with some additional ones. And this is the quality of the M1 24 inch iMac using their new 1080p camera, the new microphones, which are on the top and back, and with the signal processing with the M1 chip. Go ahead and let me know down below which one looked better and which one sounded better to you. And now let's go ahead and compare the displays. Both of these are 24 inch displays, but we have a massive amount of differences. As far as the resolution, the HP uses a 1080p panel compared to 4.5K. Now in reality, if we look at the pixels, this one has just over 2 million pixels compared to 11.3 million pixels. So over five times as many pixels. And can you tell while sitting at them? Absolutely. With the iMac, you cannot see in each individual pixel. Whereas with this display, it is not that sharp. You see dots everywhere. Text isn't smooth. I mean, you can definitely tell. The crazier thing is even on the larger 27-inch model, they still use a 1080p panel. So the quality looks even worse on that one. Now, along with that, we have differences in contrast and brightness. 
The HP gets up to 250 nits, which is fine in darker rooms, but the M1 iMac gets up to 500 nits of brightness, so it's literally twice as bright. Along with that, it has better reflectivity coatings to battle against you know, reflections in your room, so that makes it even better than twice as good. And the contrast levels are also deeper and darker, which is great. Now to add on to that, the color accuracy is also much better. It actually has DCI-P3 color accuracy. So if you're somebody that's gonna do photo and video editing, you'll definitely be much better off with the M1 iMac. Now, the display that's packed into this costs at least $700. The closest thing to it is LG's 24-inch Ultrafine that actually has lower resolution than this display. So the iMac packs in a ton of value as far as screen compared to something that's roughly about $200 worth of screen built into the HP. And now, let's get into performance. And the first test that I wanna run is a web browsing test. So let's go ahead and we're gonna click start at the, with both of them at the same time. All right. Right, it looks like our iMac got 228 with the M1 chip. That is incredible. That even beats out my $15,000 Mac Pro. And yes, it is noticeable when you're doing simple tasks in web browsing. This thing is speedier than that computer. And then the HP got 103. Okay, well that is lower than I expected. I actually thought it was gonna be about 150, 135, 40-ish. So it looks like the M1 Mac is more than twice as fast for web browsing and online based applications. And you will absolutely notice that difference. And now let's see how fast the SSDs are inside of these machines. Maybe it doesn't matter that Thunderbolt isn't included in this machine if the SSD is slow. Now I will have to say that the HP comes actually with a one terabyte SSD compared to 256 gigabytes on the M1 iMac. You can pay more to get more, but it is spendy, whereas this has a lot more capacity. So let's go ahead and start our test. Now, bam, look at the iMac there, 2,300 on the right and about 2,200 on the read. Very, very good speeds. And how about our HP? Okay, it looks like 1,200 for write and 1,850 for read. So the write speed is about half as uh, fast or about twice as slow if you want to say it that way. And actually, I guess that is true. If you had a Thunderbolt SSD like I did, well, it wouldn't do you much good uh, because the SSD can't keep up when you're transferring files to it. So it's definitely not horrible. It's better than a spinning hard drive, but it's nowhere near good high quality SSDs at this, at this point. And now let's run Geekbench 5. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the start button. Uh, the HP does have an i5 processor, and it's interesting that it's a T processor. So i5 isn't the slowest. Cheaper ones will have an i3 or an older AMD processor. I couldn't get an i7 in this model, uh, whereas of course we have the M1 chip that's in five different Macs. Now we also have a difference in RAM. We have 16 gigs for this higher end model, but the eight gig one actually scores the same because of that unified memory that has, has really fast access. Whereas our HP actually has oddly 12 gigs of RAM. Now, they say you can't update it. I'm not sure how you'd access the RAM in here, uh, but 12, I haven't seen a number like that in a while. You should see either eight gigs or 16 gigs. All right, and look at that, guys. We have 1,740 single core, 7,695 multi-core. I mean, the M1 chip is amazing as far as the performance for the money. And then on the HP, all right, we have 967 single core, that is about 80% slower than the M1 iMac and 4658 multi-core. That's about 65% slower multi-core. That's a big difference in performance, even though this is not a four core laptop processor. This is actually a six core processor in here. Yeah, the performance difference is pretty dang big. Uh, but before we get into some real world tests such as photo and video editing, let's go ahead and test out the graphics performance. This is 3 Mark's new Wildlife Extreme Gaming Test. Let's go ahead and hit run on both of these and see how does this perform in terms of gaming. It supports all the games, but can it actually keep up with the M1 chip? All right, let's see what we got. We have almost 5,000 points and 29.6 frames per second. 
just killer graphics performance from the M1 chip. Now, of course, if you get the base level that has one less GPU core, so you guys see the score from the base one right now, uh, basically, I don't know, it's not really worth upgrading just for that. And let's see what our HP got. Why, well, yeah, um, 786. That is a lot lower than I expected. Of course, this does have integrated graphics that are paired with that desktop class chip. Not dedicated graphics, but we're looking at almost 5,000 compared to 786. Let's scroll down and see the frames per second. Yeah, we have 4.7 frames per second compared to 29.6. Now, there are a few 24 inch all-in-ones that have MX350 graphics, dedicated ones. Those get about 2,500 score compared to 5,000. So closer, but still half the performance and about 15 frames per second. So I guess the M1, although you don't have access to all the Windows games, you have some Mac games, a lot of iPad games, but the graphics performance is massive. Now let's go ahead and shut this down and see what we get in photo editing. Now these are some edited raw images and even though Lightroom Classic is still being translated through Rosetta, it's not a native app, the performance is really quick. Of course, that's because of the M1 chip and also because of the ultra fast SSD. And if we wanna go ahead and punch into this hot air balloon, it is really nice and snappy, pretty much no delay. Let's see what we get with the HP. First off, let's flip through some of these photos. And right there, you guys can see, we have about a three or so second delay, depending on the photo, about two seconds there, three seconds there. Definitely not as snappy as the M1. Takes a lot longer. Let's go ahead and try to punch in here. All right, pretty quick to flip to this one. Let's try here. All right, definitely not bad when we're punching in, but flipping through photos to load all those effects, it definitely takes a long time. And now let's go ahead and export all 50 of these raw images to JPEG. Now the iMac is definitely ahead. And if we look at our task manager, the RAM isn't actually being completely used. It's close, but not maxed out. But the CPU is maxed out and it's running at about 3.2 gigahertz. That's exactly what the four performance cores are running with the M1 iMac. Uh, whereas here we have six of those performance cores. So this should actually be a pretty good workflow for this uh, machine. And if we look at the graphics, those are barely being used. So we're not gonna be limited by the weak graphics. All right, our M1 iMac is done. Let's go ahead and wait for this one. All right, the HP is now done. I have our results right here. And um, I wanna say that the base model actually is quite a bit slower than this higher end one, partially because it has worse cooling, but also because this one has more RAM. And this machine right here took two minutes and six seconds to finish this export. That is really fast. Now the base model took four minutes and 20 seconds with the older version of Lightroom before the latest update. It might be a little bit faster now. So I want you guys to go ahead and pause this video and guess how long do you think this HP took to export these photos? Go ahead and do that. I'll wait a second. All right, the HP took four minutes and four seconds, almost as long as the base iMac. So it's actually pretty good performance overall. I was expecting it to be slower. It did great in this photo editing test, but it's still almost twice as long as this iMac right here that has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It is much faster and also much snappier when you're actually editing photo. And now I wanna go ahead and close this and I wanna do the final test. We're gonna be doing a 4K editing test because this is gonna push both the CPU and the graphics. This is a standard 4K project in the beta version of Premiere Pro, so it's not fully optimized for M1 yet. But as you guys can see, even with a couple LUTs applied, some color effects, it's running perfectly smoothly, no issues whatsoever. Let's go ahead and see how the HP does. Let's hit our space bar to play. And okay, look at that. I don't know what frame per second we're getting. Maybe two, three frames per second. It is glitching like crazy. Basically, you're not gonna have a really good time video editing unless you're doing 1080p or proxy files or no effects. That is a big difference. But now let's go ahead and queue these up and let's do an export test. And now let's go ahead and hit start and we'll see how long it takes to export this five minute project. So it's been about a minute and it looks like we have 
just over six minutes remaining until it's finished. Premiere Pro is fairly accurate with their export estimates after you give it about a minute or so. And I've done this test in the past. With this higher end model that has 16 gigs of RAM and the extra graphics core, it takes roughly seven minutes or so, uh, seven to seven and a half. Now, if you have the cheaper base model, that one takes about eight and a half minutes, so a little bit longer. Let's check out on our HP. Wow, this thing says that it's gonna need another 43 minutes <laughs> to export this project. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I'm not gonna be waiting that long. So basically with the iMac, you're looking at between seven and a half to eight and a half minutes compared to about 45 minutes total. That is absolute insanity. And keep in mind, Premiere Pro is not yet all the way optimized. This actually takes two and a half minutes with Final Cut Pro if you choose to use that. But if you want the slowest program on the M1 Mac, you're looking at seven and a half to eight and a half minutes. That is crazy. So what is our verdict? How does the best rated 24 inch 2021 Windows all-in-one compare to the new 24 inch M1 iMac? Well, I have to say, there's no way I would buy one. Yes, now that it's on sale, you can buy one for less than M1 iMac. It's not the same price compared to at least the base one. Uh, but realistically, other than the speakers being louder and sounding better at similar volumes uh, and maybe having more ports, I don't know how you would buy this thing. It, it's a hard sell for me personally. I would say spend the extra money, get yourself an iMac. It's gonna be all around a much better computer. It's gonna last a long time. You might have to deal with some dongles. Maybe you'll spend a little bit more money, but it's gonna be well worth it. But you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you guys click that subscribe button, you can help us reach a million subscribers by the end of this year. That is our goal. We would greatly appreciate it. We have a couple of great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I will see you in the next video.